and certainly I think what you've just summed up is, is very much the way forward. And, and I want to really highlight why is GFAR involved in this? Because GFAR is a collective action in itself. We deal in this currency of how people from all different stakeholder sectors not just work together, but actually really make things happen together. And climate change, why have we been so involved? Because we have to be. Because who is not involved? This is something we really have to get to grips with together. And I think COP23 is a great opportunity for action. We see there also that, frankly, the governments don't know how to implement change in agriculture. They're looking for answers. They're looking for knowledge. You, we, are the ones with the knowledge, and the opportunity is here to provide some of those answers and move things forward. With the farmers at the center of those processes, not at the end of some pipeline of ideas, but as the drivers of this whole process. And why is that important? We've got a four-year time frame. For goodness sake, four years. It's not just four years, it's been 10 years at least we've been banging this in UNFCCC. And finally, finally, agriculture is a footnote in the agenda. Four years is a short time in UN politics. It's a very long time in climate change. We've already lost most of the Californian wine industry this year alone. These things are happening and they're happening now. So we have to look at this not just as a future threat, but what our actions are today that will actually make a difference. Because if we don't, if we look at this over two degree rise, we lose the coral reefs. We're already losing the coral reefs. We lose the coral reefs, we lose the fish industry, a huge source of protein for people. A little bit higher, we start to lose the terrestrial industries as well. Somehow, I haven't sensed that urgency in the meeting today. I haven't sensed that desperation that we all should show as the sector that is not only most affected by climate change, but is also, as we heard earlier, the cause of 30% or so of the greenhouse gases through deforestation and production. So we really have to take GAXA not just as it is, but take it much more seriously as a way of working together to make a difference. That means also bringing society into this discussion. It's not just a technical discussion, it's one about how communities themselves are the driver. And collective action really is the principle here, and I think that's what you've, you've summarized very well, me. And, and this really is the way of the future, not just in this sector. Look around you, look at the business sector, Uber, Airbnb, Airbus, cloud com computing, crowdsourcing, the one movement, eight million people joining together because they believe in an identity and a purpose. We shouldn't be content with a couple of hundred in GAXA. Where are our millions? Where are the people who are really committed to addressing this crucial agenda? And that's the key element I think we have to generate out of all these discussions, is the common agenda and be driven by our passion because if not us, nobody else is going to care. And the collective needs to be the sum of its parts. It's not centrally driven. The processes are driven by all of you playing your parts, whether it's at local community level, regional level, national level, or indeed at global level. And what collective action means is self-commitment, but it also means it requires catalysis, not management. No one's telling you what to do. It's a voluntary action, it's a subsidiarity process, if I can use that word, basically meaning that everything is bottom up, everything is driven by what people are prepared to do themselves. And that needs an element of resource, and it needs a, a system to drive it, both some form of facilitation unit, also in the working groups and the collective drive and communication, communication, communication is what keeps everybody involved. And this is not new. If you look at the work of Elena Ostrom, Nobel Prize winner, is all about the value and the necessity of collective action. Because we're dealing with climate change, we're dealing with the ultimate wicked problem, as they call it, complex problem that cannot be addressed by any one institution, cannot be addressed by any one government, cannot be addressed by any one person, no matter how much money they have. It's about all of us. We're all the sinners and the actors and the answer 
for climate change. And what we, I think, can really gain through GAXA is that synergy, is that value addition. How do we work together to make one plus one equal three? That's the question. That's the question for all of us. Getting to that frame where we're thinking beyond our own boxes and our own problems. Getting away from project thinking, for goodness sake, why are we talking still about who's going to fund my pet project instead of how am I going to work together with other people to really change the dynamic here? We have to work as multiple actors, we have to work together, we have to get away from linear thinking because that's not going to solve this. And that means challenging institutions, our own and other institutions, to reflect on, on what are they doing and can they do it better? Can they do more? Can they be the agents to make the change? Can we play our part to make that happen? Can we challenge the power relationships that are stopping things happening? That takes courage. And it takes collective movement to do so. Because it's very difficult to do it individually. Institutions by their nature have walls, they have boundaries that define themselves. That's how they've built up. And our challenge as a group is to break down those walls and actually see how we can get collective actions that benefit from the knowledge that others have, the capabilities that others have, instead of the petty tribalism and jealousy that we live in, get into making the change happen. Climate change doesn't respect those boundaries, why should we? The facilitation unit was mentioned just now, I think that is a vital need. If this GAXA is really going to fly, it has to have a capable facilitation unit, not necessarily a central facilitation unit, but enough people who are forming a critical mass who are going to really drive this forward because these collective actions take two things fundamentally. They take inspiration, champions who will really inspire others, and they take perspiration because there's a hell of a lot of work to do just to get these things to happen and these changes to happen. So let's make that happen. Let's make sure our work is equitable so everyone's involved. Let's, when we challenge systems, do so constructively, not destructively. There's much that needs questioning, but we need to come with the answers and the solutions, not just with the problems. And that means changing attitudes, it means changing systems, it means changing institutions, something that we're all able to do if we just have the courage to work together. And that's the value of this working group dynamic. It gives us the collective courage. It gives us the collective voice. Any one of us talking out there, will we be heard? Perhaps we'll be a whisper. If we're heard together as hundreds or thousands of people and institutions, millions of people working together, then it starts to really make a difference. And that's what will lift this above the mundane, out of the institutionalized box itself into a real movement for change. And GAXA should be the answer here, but it won't be unless we let it be, unless we make it be. And fundamentally, I think we have to engage much more with communities at all levels, local, national, regional, global, whichever level of community we're talking. And that means helping people to think about their own futures and own the problem themselves. What is their desired future? in 20 years' time, what does their agricultural system look like? What are the implications of climate change? And therefore, what's their desired future and what do they need to get to? That's how we will really engage people and bring them in. That foresighting approach and then backcasting to what do we need to do about it now is what will produce the answers. There's no prescriptions here. There's no ultimate answers that will fix it around the world. We have to work with real people, with the culture in agriculture, as to what it means for the change that they are prepared to make for themselves to really make a difference on a global scale. So there's nothing prescriptive here, but it has to be an action-based platform, not just talk. We have to really be thinking about what are the bottom-up ways of looking at the problem and creating that two-way loop. What can international knowledge and ideas inspire at local level? And what can we learn globally from what happens in the realities at local level? We need this perfect circle of knowledge and learning. At the moment, it's very fragmented. And that virtuous loop 
also gives us the opportunity to track the impacts of the dialogues and the actions that we're bringing forward so that we can show how what we're talking about here is changing institutions, is changing systems, is changing farmers' lives on the ground, is changing the climate. So the key need here is for real collective action. It's for learning, it's for advocacy, it's for awareness, all the things that we're doing, but we need to do much better, much faster, much bigger. The key need, I think, out of this meeting is can we actually walk away from here and all of us say, I am GAXA. If not, then we're failing. If we're not prepared to own the agenda, then we're not really delivering the solution. Is it something we can own beyond our own institution and therefore commit ourselves into? And to me, we have to create this global movement for change. It's not about intergovernmental blah. It's about real people making real solutions. Because we can't wait around for climate change. It's on us already. And if we don't act on it, then who is going to? And if we don't do it now, then when are we going to do it? And frankly, if we don't take this very seriously right now, today, there isn't going to be a tomorrow. Thank you very much.